And in the impact segment tonight, the magazine Rolling Stone causing some controversy. Their cover boy accused terrorist Yohar Chenev looking like a rock star. In fact, some believe the cover mimics a Rolling Stone exposition of the late Jim Morrison, the lead singer of The Doors. Obviously, Rolling Stone put the terrorists on the cover to get attention. Joining us now from Washington, Kate Obershane, Republican strategist, and Kirsten Powers, a Democrat and Fox News analyst. What do you think about that, Kirsten? Oh, I thought it was terrible. Actually, kind of sick, to be honest. If you look, if you go back and look at past covers of Rolling Stone, I mean, who do they have on it? They have uh, you know, pe famous people like the president, for example, or uh, you know, movie stars or or singers, but people who are very much glamorized. And this was glamorizing a terrorist. All right, but. Rolling Stone is a counterculture paper concentrating on music. Uh, mm -hmm. Business has not been great for them. They want to get attention. Uh, the article they did, uh, Kate, was basically about him and how he arrived at the point where he wanted to kill innocent people. Um, they used the word monster in the article. Yeah. So did they do anything wrong? Well, they also point out that the article, which we haven't seen yet, it hits the stands on Friday. No, I saw it. Is, okay, I saw I I have, it. Oh, I don't have your access. Yeah, I saw I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought you had seen it. We, yeah, we the article the, is basically a, a, a tracing of him right. and his family and, and how he got into the terrorist circle, how right. he saw his brother, his mother, his father. It doesn't glorify him. But it does put him in a position of being somewhat sympathetic because he's a quote unquote dysfunctional family. You know, right, and I'll I come back to that. Rolling Stone itself said that the article is heartbreaking and riveting. And I was really struck by that because I think the truly heartbreaking, riveting stories that would sell Rolling Stone magazines but would also be sympathetic to the people of Boston would be that of little Richard Martin, the eight year old who's, who was killed and his family. His little sister lost a leg. The right. two brothers. Who well, maybe lost Rolling legs. Stone thought that that would be part of because they do mention it, people. But I have to say, it's, I found the story neither heartbreaking nor riveting. Riveting. It was Good. okay. Well, All right. right. Well, Bill, the other point that I think that we have to, I look at when I see articles like this is the temptation and the tendency of the mainstream media to have some degree, frankly, of sympathy with terrorists well, that's, who that's blame America play. for that's our ills. That's what's in ills. play right now. Menino, the governor is. of Boston, uh, the governor of Boston, the mayor of Boston, Menino, uh, he says he's appalled and shocked and offended and all those adjectives. But the governor, all right, uh, of Massachusetts, of the Commonwealth, he says he's not so offended. Eh, you know, it, it could have been manner, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder powers. Uh, I guess. Look, I, I, the, the problem is it'd be one thing to put a picture of him, I guess, but they chose a picture that was sort of, gla you know, glamorizing him sure. a bit. It, it Absolutely. Wasn't, they could have had yeah, him in some other way, and uh, yeah. there he is, and he looks like one of the Maroon Five or whatever they're doing. I don't know. Well, um, yeah, and I think, you know, if, if, if it's, just, it's just rewarding, you know, t t a murderer, I'm sure he loves it. And, yeah, and, and glorifying sure him for right. something that, that, you know, was terrible, and I, I just don't, I think it was very bad judgment. All right, and you then... Know, it's just, I understand Rolling days. Stone readers are tweeting yeah. uh, that this is bad. Even their hardcore subscribers don't like it. But again, it gets Rolling Stone attention, which they haven't had in quite some time. Go ahead, Kate. There's, there's been a massive backlash actually on social media and you know this is the free market people don't have to buy it but it is striking that just six days ago the guy smirked at the victims and the families of victims in the courtroom and that Rolling Stone didn't show a little more judgment but they're actually playing into this rising sex status uh, symbolism that he has particularly among young girls it's disgusting what's happening and they're playing right into it just to sell their magazine and to give sympathy to the terrorists all right um, freedom of the press uh, may Means that you can do stuff like this, but as Kate pointed out, it is in the marketplace, and uh, you know. But CBS the subscribers are this. It. Look, nobody buys Rolling Stone on the stands. I think it's 70,000 copies. It's the subscriber base and the advertising base that they got to worry about. Um, but we are living in an age where we saw it outside the courtroom powers, where there were people actually sympathizing. Oh, you didn't. Mm. You, and I got letters. Oh, there's not enough proof. You can't say he's guilty. Yeah, come on. You know, I mean, let's go.
I don't have time for that. It's nonsense. We all know he did it. We all know he's going to be convicted. He's going to go to life in prison because he'll probably plea it down at the last minute. Last word, Powers. We agree. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no. This means Look, you can't I mean, go yes. out for the weekend he's, in D.C. He's, you a, can't. he's accused, you know, so what? I mean, if he's just accused, then why put him on the cover? I mean, really, that's just a silly argument. And, and if there is something very twisted that anybody would treat this guy as a hero, um, including Rolling Stone. Do you think DeVal Patrick, the governor, would come on a program and talk about this with me? I highly doubt it. <laughs>